Welcome back to your listening to Radio Rebel, update episode 7. The title says it all, or maybe only the first part of it all. I'm going to pit artificial intelligence against human intelligence, as it may apply to the popular word game, Wordle. Now, all of this talk on my part about AI recently has been an attempt to define my own attitude towards it. I need to know what that attitude is before I decide if I have an opinion about it, though recent studies of mine into Stoic philosophy lead me to understand that I really don't need to have an opinion about it at all. Well, opinion aside, I do think I need to be clear, at least with myself, what my attitude is, what I think about AI. Which leads me first to try to define AI for myself. It's really an ambiguous name for a thing. The noun intelligence itself kind of defies definition. Mr. Dick says, A1, the ability to learn or understand or to deal with new or trying situations. A2, the ability to apply knowledge to manipulate one's environment or to think abstractly as measured by objective criteria, such as tests. C. Mental acuteness. B. In Christian science, the basic eternal quality of divine mind. Now, where is the intelligence in that definition that begins with A, jumps to C, then backtracks to B? What about the adjective, artificial? Humanly contrived, often on a natural model. So, combining the independent definitions, artificial intelligence turns out to be something like A humanly contrived ability to learn and understand or deal with new or trying situations, to apply knowledge to manipulate one's environment, or to think abstractly as measured by objective criteria based on a natural model. Hmm. Compare that to Webster's official definition of AI. 1. A branch of computer science dealing with the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers. 2. The capability of a machine to imitate intelligent human behavior. Now, the last time I talked about this in Update Episode 6, I facetiously, indirectly, compared AI with a coffee machine, even a coffee mug. Today, I'm going to up the technology and compare it to an alarm clock. I'm talking about a wind-up alarm clock with two little bells on top with a clapper in the middle that jerks from side to side with the intent of calling your attention to a pre-programmed hour of the day. Before I looked up the two words that make up AI, I thought to myself, well, an alarm clock is kind of a very basic form of artificial intelligence. It's able to mark the passing of time in a regular fashion, sometimes down to the second, but usually showing the hours and minutes that humans have assigned to the moments of the day. It can be programmed with a simple turn of a dial to alert its human of a moment of that day with that clang of the bells. That is about the extent of its intelligence, a regular marking of moments, the display of those moments on its face, and its blind obedience to shout out a moment depending on the human that has marked that time. It can go no further. It is, in a limited scope, more intelligent than the human that uses it. It will, as long as it is wound, mark those minutes and hours of each day, You try to accurately know when a minute or an hour has passed in your everyday life without using a clock. It will remember a particular moment of the day, at least twice a day, whether the alarm switch is on or off, a pin will click in a gear as it passes that moment. Were humans better at remembering that particular moment, they wouldn't need the alarm clock. Hmm, just saw a video that explained why clocks run clockwise. Now, is clockwise a thing that comes from someone randomly deciding the directions the hands move and everyone accepting that standard? Well, no. Clockwise is actually the direction in which the shadow moves across a sundial in the northern hemisphere, where clocks were invented. That was a fun fact. 
So, can I consider that alarm clock a kind of very primitive AI? Well, it does meet the criteria for artificial. It is humanly contrived based on a natural model, the shadow brought about by the sun moving in its arc in the sky. Intelligent is a little harder to pin. The closest, and it's a far shot, is understand. The clock understands that it needs to ring when the pin coincides with the groove in the alarm gear. Yet the clock does not do anything by itself. It doesn't learn to go off. It must be told to do so. It needs a human to wind it up. That same human will have to set the clock to the correct time and periodically adjust that time. And like I said, that human will need to tell the clock through setting the alarm and activating it at just what moment it should set the clapper into action against the bells. Without human intervention, that clapper will beat left and right until the spring is wound out. Everything the clock does and knows is directly linked to the human who made or manipulates the device. Yet if we compare the alarm clock with the sundial... Well, if we were to metaphorically compare the intelligence of the two, the alarm clock would indeed seem smarter than the sundial. The clock is at least open to human intervention. It can display more detailed time. It can remind a human of a programmed moment in time. The sundial just sits there in the garden, on its pedestal, passively hoping a ray of sunlight will caress the gnomon into casting a shadow onto the engraved base. Uh, wasn't this episode about Wordle? Yes, well, that was the title I typed up, and yes, I was thinking about Wordle as I composed this episode in my mind this morning as I tied up tomato plants in the garden. So, Wordle. Wordle is this word game. I play it in the New York Times version, which thankfully only lets me play one round a day. You have to discover a five-letter word in six or less tries. You begin by typing in any five-letter word you fancy in the first try. The game then marks those letters in three different colors. Black, the letter is not in the word. Mustard yellow, the letter is in the word, but it's in the wrong place. And green, which means the letter is in the word and in the right place. From there, you shuffle letters about until you've solved the puzzle. In order to do this puzzle, a few human intelligence traits come in handy. Uh, for example, knowing frequency of letter use in English. E is the most used vowel, T the most used consonant. Or maybe knowing common letter combinations, or better put, impossible letter combinations like M, R, or S, B. Mm, having a fairly broad vocabulary of fairly common words helps. Wordle does not use uncommon or strange words. It rarely uses plurals that end in S or verb forms. And being generally agile at puzzle solving. My first 63 days streak I did on my own. I relied exclusively on my human intelligence, even considered myself to have a kind of an advantage being a writer, being an English teacher, working with words every day. I don't remember the word that brought me down on day 64, uh, but I'm pretty sure it had a double letter. I hate when the word uses a letter twice. For my second 64-day streak, which I just lost with the word taste, again defeated by a twice-used letter, I decided to cheat. Well, not really cheat, but to take advantage of available tools. The first tool I used wasn't very smart. I could tell the tool the letters I wanted in the word. I could tell it that the word was only five letters long. If I knew, I could tell the tool that the word began or ended with one or more letters. The tool would give me back a list of all the five-letter words that matched those needs. I would then need to browse through that list, choose the most likely word, discover on entering it into the puzzle that it had a letter marked in black, go back and find another word, oops, that letter can't be in that position. Though the tool had given me the list with many words that are not in my own vocabulary bank, I still had to sift through those words, use my intelligence to deal with a new and trying situation. The second tool I found was much better. 
It allowed me to filter out those black letters, the ones that were not in the answer, along with letters I knew were there, as well as starting and ending letters and combinations. That one filter of letters not in the word probably reduced the list by about half and relieved my human intelligence of the task of trying to remember if this or that letter had been tried and failed made my solving of the puzzle more agile. Now, I said that I was cheating, and I guess that would probably be a valid point of view, though I don't share it. I could use my fist to pound that nail, or I could use the hammer hanging on the tool board. Or I could really cheat and go out and buy myself a nail gun and save all the banging noise. My fist is the sun and the shadows cast. The hammer is a sundial. The nail gun is the alarm clock. And the word tools I use to help me solve the wordle puzzle are somewhere between the nail gun, the alarm clock, and what is being called AI, which is smarter, which is more intelligent. Well, the only limitation any of these tools has in the deal with new or trying situation category are those we humans have imposed upon them. AI language models certainly seem smarter than wordless generators, yet those language models draw their talent from previous programming and input. And their output is quite limited by human intervention as well, as I described in update episode number four, Is Artificial Intelligence Intelligent?, where ChatGPT refused to create a text for me because my instructions went against some kind of directive established by some human being. Artificial intelligence is only as intelligent as we say it is. It's only as threatening as we allow it to be. If the alarm rings at 7 a.m. on Sunday morning, that's on me. I forgot to tell it not to. If I shoot a nail in my foot with the nail gun, that's also on me. I forgot to take my finger off the trigger before climbing down the ladder. If AI tells a fib, breaks an election, launches a nuclear missile, that's on us. We forgot to... Well... That's where that Christian science definition of intelligence comes in handy. We forgot to recognize the basic eternal quality of divine mind. Thanks for listening. I'll try to change the subject next week, okay? Cheers. You're listening to Radio Rebel. Listen, like, subscribe, and share.